No sound. I guess I should unmute it. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Welcome, everyone that is tuning in. I'm running a few minutes late here, but we are, for the most part, on schedule to do tonight's live stream to share some up updates and exciting information regarding the abandoned rail yard that I filmed with my daughter, Lily, and when I returned with Alan of the Re Revenge of the Apocalypse. And what I was able to discover was pretty amazing. I can't believe what used to be there. Some of you have had correct guesses, but I'm going to be showing you some historical photos from back all the way to the 1930s going forth and some other tidbits of information that I read and kind of pull everything together as to what that place used to look like, what used to actually be there. Yeah, I am a rookie again at live stream, so I do apologize. I'm also not going to be able to read your comments uh, for the most part during the presentation here because I'm going to be going through different slides, talking a bit about what we're looking at. So if you have any questions, try to save them until the end. We're not going to be live all that long, but I do have information I do want to get out to you guys. Um, just because many of you have been curious and wanting to know, you know, what that place used to be, because, you know, what we see today is, uh, just a, just a fraction of what used to actually be there. But hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you're having a good evening. Now, the one thing I do notice, and I do apologize in advance is on StreamYard, which I'm using to stream this right now. I don't get to see all the comments for some reason. They don't come through. Um, I should say not every comment comes through. They only come through on the YouTube chat. I don't really want to keep going back and forth between screens here. I just want to keep it simple and, and straightforward. So I will, you know, just have to apologize in advance if I don't see your comments. I'm not intentionally ignoring anyone, but as mentioned, I'm going to be focusing more on my screen here, more so than the chat. But I see a lot of you guys uh, are here that missed the last live stream when I did the little demonstration experiment with the train camera, train view. So me putting it out in advance, I was going to be going live tonight. Hopefully it was beneficial. You guys were able to have a reminder set and to be able to tune in and catch me live instead of the replay. <clears throat> Caught the Penn Central Heritage Unit. Nice. I've seen that a couple of times. So I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes here till about 10 after. Then we're going to get started. So until then, I will uh, see who's in here, what you guys are chatting about. And also, how is the lighting? Am I bright enough? Am I too dark? Um, does it look okay? And a little plug to RailFest. This is from 2019, but wearing it to help promote RailFest returning June 11th and 12th of this year at Steamtown National Historic Site. I can't wait for that. Hopefully some of you guys can make it. If not, you'll definitely see a video from there. Lighting looks good. Okay. <clears throat> Jacob Poucher says, great to see you live again. And where did, oh, there it goes. Okay. Well, thanks for that $2 super chat. And it does feel good to be alive every now and then. I, uh, as mentioned, not to be repetitive. I won't be coming back like I used to with all the lives, but now and again, it's okay. I, I enjoy it every, every so often. Caught the New Norfolk Southern Geometry Unit. That's one I haven't seen in person yet. Good light, good ambience, looks good. And both Costellos are here. Good to see you guys tuning in. Jacqueline says, like, looks good with the light. Okay. As you can see, too, I have my insulators lit up. That's probably my favorite lighting source that I have here. But I got uh, you know, LEDs and the Friday 13th up there and the train, the lamp. So... All together, I like the I like the lighting. Kind of sets the mood, gives it a relaxing environment here. So I will tell you that many of you have thrown out some suggestions as to what that location was, or at least pieces of it. And a few things that were thrown out there is or was a roundhouse. And I could tell you that you were definitely on the right track. No pun intended. Um, there was a roundhouse there and then some, um, I had no idea a roundhouse even existed in that piece of land. So when we're able to see the pictures, it's going to be pretty shocking to see actually how involved it was. Uh, 
the chat freeze up here? What's going on? There it goes. Well, on my desk here, I do have one, two, three, four, five insulators that are lit up. But I do have probably close to 10 in total, though. <clears throat> so, okay, we got 57 people here. It's 10 after. So before I start screen sharing, I do want to mention something. And something I've touched base on before, and it's nothing bad, just something I want to put out there for those who may not have heard it in the past or maybe don't really know, you know, what I do as far as what's involved with videos. So basically the best way to put it is that there's channels out there that spend days, weeks, sometimes even months doing research on locations. I mean, they try to find every tidbit of information that there is about a particular subject or location. And when they do that, it pays off. I mean, I love learning things. People do as well. I mean, getting educated on what you're seeing in the video is even more entertaining than, than not. But with that being said, though, that is not me or my channel. The reason I'm saying that is because a lot of people do comment stating, you know, I wish you'd be able to share more information. wish I knew this, wish I knew that. And trust me, I would love to be able to share everything that there is to share. Now, one thing I can tell you, though, is that for most of my life, I've been an explorer. That's what I consider myself as. I'm not a historian, I'm not a profound researcher. I'm not vastly knowledgeable on all things out there. When information is available, when I do find it, I do share it with you guys. I don't like to withhold anything. The more you guys know, the more you will come to appreciate, you know, the location and the subject of the video. A lot of times, though, I don't share information just because I don't have anything to share. It's not because I don't want to. Now, I don't know all the resources that are out there. I do know of some things here and there. A lot of things were mentioned to me or suggested to me by viewers, which I have started utilizing. And that's why we're doing today's live stream, because I was able to get some websites and information that I didn't know was actually out there or still available. So going forth, I just want to say that if I do go to a location, if I don't share a lot of information, it's not because I don't want to, it's just because I don't have it. I, I don't have time to spend days, weeks, or months on one particular subject or, or location. It would just throw my whole algorithm and, and scheduling off. You know, I spend up to a few hours, maybe a day at most, but however little or significant the information is, if I do find it, it will be shared with you guys. If it's not, just please be understanding that there is a reason why. But I hope you do appreciate, though, that I do take you these, to these locations, whether it's exploring in the woods or an abandoned building or whatever it is, I thoroughly enjoy going to these places, filming them and sharing them with you guys and making you feel like you're there as well. So I just wanted to get that out there in case there's any wonder why I don't share all these details about locations. It's, that's pretty much the reason why. Uh, okay, we got Matt's in here. Hey, Matt, and RJ's here. Good to see you guys stopping in. All right, so I'm going to be focusing my attention now on the screen here. I'm going to start sharing with you guys what I got going on here. So we're going to start with the um, location thumbnails. So just to refresh memory, this is the first time I went there with Lily. It was the Lehigh and Susquehanna rail line showing the remnants of it, what's left of it. And then go back a second time with Alan to explore under the rail yard through the culvert. So bringing us to a 2020 map image here. The cats are making a lot of noise. I'm going to try to not to go too fast, but I'm going to try to remember everything as well. So what we're looking at here, hopefully you guys can see my mouse on the screen. This is the Ashley Borough building. I parked right here in this corner when I went both times. And as you can see, there is a cutout through the trees here. That is because that is part of the old rail line. So I walked in here the first time with Lily, and we came to this section here where it's like a fork. And that's where I discovered the first sections of rails. <clears throat> and we were able to get some pictures of them. And the culvert also is right around here where it starts, which I showed in that video, but we didn't go through it that day. So the rails do continue along and meet up with an active line here, which is now RJ Corman. They are the uh, owners and usage of this track that's only one in, in existence here. Um, the other ones are just far gone, long abandoned. There's another line here too that I saw, but then 
it did meet up with this one. As you can see, there was a fork here, which is a switch. So that does make sense looking at on Google Maps as to what we found that day. Now, looking at it, this is obviously 2020, as I mentioned. Areas all overgrown. It doesn't look like much of anything except for the cutouts where you could see rail lines used to be. And the reason I'm showing this here is because there's still some things we're going to get to as we kind of start back in time and come back to new. So going back now, actually, I'm going to do this. Before I do that, <laughs> um, so this is the map right here shows the little railroad tracks. This is the Lehigh and Susquehanna Railroad, which is just south of Wilkesbury, which is Ashley, which I was just showing you, Ashley Borough, Ashley, Pennsylvania. So this is a small section here of the Lehigh and Susquehanna. And this line did tie in with the Lehigh Canal and um, the Ashley Plains and even to Jim Thorpe itself. So that's the section right there. Now, when we were there, when I returned with Alan, we found some of these objects in the woods here. What we're looking at here are some curved pieces of concrete. Definitely a cylindrical, circular shape. And when I saw it, a roundhouse is the last thing that came to mind. I, I will be honest. I didn't even consider that. I do know something was obviously needed for this shape. also found these supports. There's two in the distance, one here and one buried. I originally thought it was maybe a signal tower, maybe even a signal bridge, but we may have an answer what these were used for, which we're going to get to, but that's some of the other remains. Also found this big wall here. You see it's curved. It's concrete here. There's brick underneath it. It's pretty much flat over here on the backside. Alan is standing on it to show scale. And it's a decent sized wall. Now, right there in the background, there is a foundation there, <clears throat> which I did find the first time when I was there with Lily. And we explored it more when I returned with Alan. That's the foundation of a building, which we are able to identify now. But this wall is right next to it, which led me to believe it may have but stood here at one time. I don't think I was exactly correct on that, but I wasn't too far off. But this wall, though, that you see is curved does play an important part because uh, where am I at here? It's curved for a reason. And as I mentioned about a roundhouse. So we're going to jump now to 1939. Up here in the corner, just to show you, this is a 1939 aerial map. And we're going to go to the center of the map here and I'm going to zoom in. And what we're looking at here is basically the same image I showed you on the 2020 map. I'm going to get in closer. Now this right here, this building here, this is part of the rail yard, but this is now the current location of the Ashley Borough building. So where I parked was right around here. The current building is right around here. As you can see, when I was exploring, walking through, let me show you one more image. I was walking through and saw these rails here sitting on top of concrete inside an open pit. That I should have realized was the open pit of a roundhouse, roundhouse stall, I should say. So these tracks where I took this picture was actually inside of the roundhouse. Getting back to this picture here, I was walking somewhere in here. This is not a full circular roundhouse. It looks like about a three quarter roundhouse. You see the turntable right there in the middle. So the foundation that we saw of the building was part of the foundation of the roundhouse. Those tracks I just showed with the concrete was one of the stalls. And inside a roundhouse, even at Steamtown or Strasburg, when the locomotives are parked in the roundhouse, it's an open pit underneath so that the mechanics could go underneath the locomotives to do any necessary repairs or maintenance. So a roundhouse back in 1939 did stand here. I also did find out too, this was part of the CNJ, Central New Jersey Railroad Yard or Central Railroad of New Jersey, known as the CNJ. So this was their yard here in Ashley. And as you can see, there are lines upon lines. 
right here is the Ashley Breaker, which is this monstrosity right here. This is what we're looking at. So this is the Ashley Breaker, which was dismantled in 2014. Showing it here, back when it's in use, this is all the lines in the yard here, full of coal cars. The stack is still there, but the rest of the structures are gone, except for a couple of small remaining buildings. But you can see the extensive lines here in the yard. <clears throat> so this is what it is when it was actively used. I believe 1925 it started operation. I may be incorrect about that, but just looking here, you can see all the... It's well over a dozen lines here for the rail yard. Now, what we saw in the 2020 map is this big swooping curve, which is here. This is a big turnaround for the main line that is overgrown now, but is still essentially still there. Now, when I saw that building foundation, when I was there with Lily and with Alan, I thought it was originally this building here. You see this big, long gated building. Um, Fortunately, it's not that because the orientation, the position of it does not match up. The lines were over here, which means it was somewhere in the middle of the roundhouse. This, I could tell you, is farther off, which we didn't get this far over to explore because I didn't know this was actually there at the time. Another thing I want to show you, too, is right here where I'm showing on the mouse, this is a waterway. This is where the creek comes down and the culvert starts right around here i believe somewhere in this area the culvert starts where me and alan entered and when we came through to the other end was right here you see that white spot that is the other side of the culvert and also where another culvert began and ends up over here so when we came out of the culvert there was an active line above us which means it was right around here we didn't go when we came out the other side, we went down this side looking for more ruins and remains. We stayed on the left side of the stream. This building was on the right side. We never explored this area, which means I need to return to see if there's anything left of this building. Now, the interesting thing is, this is 1939, as mentioned. We're going to skip to the next date, which is 1959. Right up here in the corner, it does show 1959. And I want you to notice, if you... I should say, if you do notice anything different here, we're in the same area here. Do you notice anything different? So right here where I'm showing you, there's a big change. The building's still here. This is the Ashley Borough building location. The parking lot's right here. Well, as you can see, the roundhouse is nearly gone. There's only one little piece of it left. It's all torn down. And it looks like the turntable has been ripped up. So by 1959, the roundhouse was being dismantled or no longer in use. Now, what this building is here, I'm going to show you on a different picture. This is actually the locomotive shop where they did either build, most likely repaired, did maintenance on the, lo on the fleet of locomotives and, and cars. And just to show you again, this is the stream known as Solomon Creek, Creek. <laughs> Solomon Creek. Uh, the culvert starts here. The opening is right there where me and Alan exited on the other side. It's also the same location where we're going to be going in the summer to return to do some underwater metal detecting. The second culvert starts, goes under the active line, exits over here. Over here, though, it's covered again. But this is a temporary bridge that was over the culvert over the creek, which is no longer here because on the current maps, which we're going to get to, this is exposed. The creek just keeps flowing with nothing over it. So they did have a temporary bridge to access the locomotive shop over the creek on the opposite end of the culvert. So a lot going on here. As we get down to the breaker, the breaker is still here in operation. It's in the midst of its operations. I mean, heavily used in the 1950s, 1960s. And, you know, a lot of activity, a lot of rail cars stack is right there and it's just a whole complex of different things now i want to show you some different images here this is showing the red lines here is the cnj rail company and if you look up here near, near wilkesbury it's a whole tangled mess of lines that's because it's a pretty much a central hub in the northeast part of the state aside from that 
and get to a closer image, you can see all these lines connect right here in Ashley. These are all CNJ rail lines. So back in the heyday of this operation, this was a big central hub, it was a full rail yard, you know, something you would see in a big city. And I didn't even know this existed. Um, the CNJ rail yard closed in 1972 and was consolidated into Conrail in 1976. So when I go back to this image here in 1959, everything is still in operation, but for whatever reason, they did dismantle the roundhouse. Can't tell you why. But I do want to show you the next interesting image here. Oh, before I do that. So back to these pieces here, these walls, these curved walls. I'm pretty sure, about 99% certain, this was sections of the roundhouse. Whether it was the top roof or a back wall, whatever it was, but it was definitely in the same location of the foundation of the roundhouse. It would have been some type of wall or roof or something, but it's concrete and brick. And it's curved, so it has the same curvature as the roundhouse. So we were essentially walking on and in the former roundhouse, which is, in my eyes, incredible when you think about it. Here's another section of the wall. This is what I first discovered, and just the shape and length of it, I did think it was that long building, the locomotive shop, but it is not in the right location. But this is one of the stall walls inside the roundhouse, and there's it kind of goes in the back here and loops around. So where's the next image I have? Um, yeah, this is probably the, the coolest one. This was shared with me uh, by a friend from 1938. So this kind of has everything labeled, and it's pretty detailed. So right back here, it says Boiler Shop Blacksmith. This is where the borough building is today. The building's right about there. This would be the parking lot. It used to be a station, which is now a roadway and buildings and houses. So I parked right around here, walked in, and was essentially walking in sections of the roundhouse. Now, even here, 1938, the roundhouse looks smaller. It looks like it was maybe being built here. In the 1939 image, these stalls were covered, these openings here. Turntables there. And you can see the curvature of the wall, of the roof. And it looks like it is two different types of material, brick and concrete. And speaking of those supports here, remember these? I'm pretty sure that it was this little coal tower here. It says locomotive coal. So that is almost like a tipple of sorts or a coal tower, there's different names for it, but basically coal cars can go underneath it or even trucks and get loaded up with coal. So I'm pretty sure those are the supports that we saw for that structure right there. I can't confirm 100%, but I am pretty certain it's in the same area and it's around the same shape. Now over here, the car shop, locomotive shop, you could see it's a long building, much longer than the roundhouse, bunch of lines going through it. Now the active line today by RJ Corman is still one of these lines here, but all these other lines are gone. And as we come down here, we can see the colliery, I'm sorry, the, um, excuse me, breaker and colliery area, the Huber breaker. Power plant stack is there, the main buildings, the big conveyor systems, and behind it is the dozens of rail lines. The number four fan and hoist house. So this image is just pretty remarkable. Now, I'm gonna to jump to some newer map images, but just keep in mind, this line here, it's like a big circle. That is still there in present day, but it's significantly overgrown. But looking at this though, is just mind blowing that I can't believe all this was there. And I was, and Alan, and even Lily was walking inside this old roundhouse. You can see there's uh, company stores, wash house. Uh, that wash house, I believe, is still there. That building is still one of the few remaining buildings that I showed when I was there with Lily. They had a rotary dump, which means the loaded coal cars would go on there and the cars would get latched to the track and then the platform would physically turn like a, a 180 to dump the coal 
and then go back and get shoved along. So the coal cars did not have any latches or doors or dumps. They physically had to be turned upside down to dump the coal out. So that is called the rotary dump. It took place right there. And there's mine openings, number five slope. It's just so much was going on back in the day. And this is 1938. And I was glad I was able to get this image from one of my friends who was able to get it from one of his multitude of resources. So now we're going to jump to 1992. Now here is pretty interesting because things look similar, but much different. So as you can see here, it's tagged, but the building was not built yet. The Ashley Borough building is right here. Parking lot is this open space, and I parked right around here. Now if you look vaguely, you can see the outline of the roundhouse. Turntables right here. And you can see all those little individual stalls. That's where the locomotives would have been. And that is what I found, one of those remaining stalls with the open pit with rail sitting on top of concrete. So back in 1992, it was still prevalent. It was still there, but it's just like a scar, just showing what used to be there. The lines look like they may have continued, but when this was built, these lines are either ripped up or paved over. Now you can see the sign here for Solomon Creek. The creek comes underneath here. The culvert starts here, exits over here. Right here where I'm showing is that deep pocket of water. That's where I'm going to be returning to do the underwater metal detecting. Right here is where the second culvert starts, which we didn't go through because it was flooded. But I do plan on going through that once I do return. And it exits over here. So the unique thing is right here. And, okay, I'm actually maybe incorrect. Right here, you can see the outline of the building, the locomotive shop, the car shop. I thought, no, actually, no, I am right. Okay, sorry. I'm getting myself mixed up. So this is the scarring of the locomotive shop. All the rails we're going through, they are now ripped up. Right here, though, but the name is over it, the creek is exposed. It is not covered over. So right there, we're underneath the, underneath the name Solomon. That is open. You can actually see that creek on the more modern maps, which I'm going to show you. So they had a temporary bridge there, as mentioned, for cars to enter the locomotive shop. This black line here is the only active line still used. That is by R.J. Corman. So you can see it did go near the locomotive shop, and there was a bunch of switches and spurs coming off to go through it. So that is the only remaining line that is used today. The abandoned lines that we found are right here. They connect up to down here, but are no longer used. You can see the circle is still here. Now, here, neighborhoods are being developed. Houses are being built. Roads are constructed. One particular road here is named Culvert, Culvert Street. And that means that there is a, essentially a culvert, which is like more like a tunnel now for the road, to go through the rail line. And I was able to find that on Google Maps. Here we are. This is Culvert Street. So the line is right up there. Cars are able to go through. It's a single pass under, um, single pass culvert or bridge, but for if made for vehicles, but the rails were on top of here. I don't know if they're still there. I do want to get back to this location to find out, but the platform itself is still up there. Looking now into 2012. Brings us a little bit more modern. Burrow building is here. Parking lots here. Abandoned rails are here. The rest of the lines are now gone. There's roads and houses and stuff. So the lines are either ripped up or paved over or buried. Active line is here. Roundhouse would have been right here, but nature did reclaim it. You can't even see anything from that time period. The locomotive shop or car shop would have been right here. Again, you can't see anything maybe a faint outline showing that it was there. Solomon Creek is still here. Culvert opening and then second culvert opening. So when me and Alan came out, came up on top, we crossed over here and followed along the left side all the way to back here to see if there was another culvert. And we, that's where, pretty much where the video wrapped up. We just saw the creek bending around the around the turn, around the curve. We didn't explore this area, so I need to return here to see if there's anything left from the car shop, anything as far as building structure or lines. 
Now, the next thing I want to show you is that, as we mentioned, this line curves around going over Colvert Street. Now, if we do follow it, it does come up to what is known as West Ashley Street. Right here is West Ashley Street. If you look in the distance, I'm going to show you down here. There's a bridge. That is the active R.J. Corman line. So that is still used. But right here is an abutment from the old line. So it would have been another bridge here where the rails would have came right over this roadway. They took out the bridge, took out the rails, and just the concrete abutment is standing here. Up on top of there, I don't know if the rails are still there. So this is a second location I need to go to. So my plans are, is to return and investigate this area on the right side of the creek and to walk this line here, the entirety to that abutment to find out if anything is still remaining, any ruins, any remains, any rails, any ties, anything at all. I want to see if anything is still hiding because nature did reclaim this area. But you could still see very prevalently that the rail rail section did go through here. So I am going to return sooner than later to explore specifically these two areas. And the culvert will be in the summer when the water is warm enough. And just to bring you to modern day 2020, well, as modern as I could get on Google Maps, it's more overgrown, but it's still there. Something's still there. I'm curious to see if there are any tracks and I want to find out if anything from the the uh, car shop is still there. So those pretty much are my findings here. I do uh, plan on getting back there within the next month to find out. Yeah, RJ, we did drive by that. Um, I think we actually drove by that on the way to Concrete City, possibly. It's in the vicinity. Um, so I just want to say everyone that took the time to reach out to me to give me resources and information, I just want to thank you so very much because without that, we wouldn't be able to share this information today. I didn't, there was a website that we used in the past. It was called Pen Pilot. It was through Penn State University. And that was my go-to source for getting old historical images, which I used in older videos. That site got shut down and I didn't realize that it got deferred to another site that still has access to those same, same images. So the 1939, 1950 some images came from that site. So I was able to get confirmation the site is still up just under a different domain. And my friend who is not a YouTuber, but he's able to do some digging, got me that detailed map with everything tagged and, and labeled as to what it was, was significant. And to find out that it was a CNJ yard that closed in 1972 is even more incredible. I didn't know a CNJ yard was there. So Lehigh Sus Susquehanna did tie into the Lehigh, I'm sorry, into the CNJ yard. There's also a, a line called the Nanakoke branch. And of course, you know, the numerous lines used for the colliery and breaker. It was just a, a hub of activity with both coal and railroad, you know, activity taking place back. As far as we could see, the oldest map image I could find was at 1939. And we were able to kind of see the progression. 1950, what was it? 1950, um, 1959, the roundhouse was nearly gone. And then 1976, Conrail took over. The yard was pretty much removed and left today are still some signs from the past. So hope you guys were able to appreciate what I was able to share with you guys because once I found that out, I got really excited about it. I'm like, you know, if, I, if I'm this excited about it, I'm sure some others will be too. And if you're not, well, <laughs> oh well. But I think it's incredible work. Um, like I said, I'm not someone who has vast knowledge with research, with history. And in my personal opinion, I'm not very good at explaining things either. I, I Some may disagree, but I had a rough time getting all the information out because I had to study it. I had to learn it. I had to memorize things. So it may not came off as smooth as other people can, can do it. And I applaud people that could do it smoothly. I'm just not one of them, but I did my best. And hopefully it made sense to you guys what I was able to show showed you long enough, talked about it enough. And if anyone watches this on the replay or even live, if you have even more knowledge, I'm sure people would love to hear it. So feel free to comment after this replays with anything additional that you do have information on as far as dates, you know, history, anything at all. Because as I've said time and time again, not only the viewers, but myself appreciate when people do take the time to comment about what we're seeing in the videos. If I don't have information on it, I'm sure somebody out there does. 
and I constantly get educated on things I'm showing you guys and helps me in the future. If I go to similar locations, I can at least have a, a sense as to what we're looking at, what I'm talking about. But I mean, this was just too cool not to share. Uh, all right, Matt, take care. Have a good one. Thanks for being here. Just briefly scrolling back through your comments. Thanks for the kind words, everyone. But yeah, if you guys um, want to see what's left of the circular rail line and the, the um, what was it called? The <laughs> car building, the car shop. Yeah, if you guys want to see what's left of that, which may be nothing, and what's left of this line, then make sure you do stay tuned for an upcoming video in the future. I'm probably going to get there, I'd say, within the next two to three weeks, I'm hoping. Oh, one other thing, too. The water source, Sullivan Creek. Some people did mention in my video with Alan about the water possibly being contam 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 contaminated. The reason people thought that is because we did find those those well pipes, those, um, I guess you'd call them metering pipes. There was those blue pipes coming out of the ground that were capped and locked. Excuse me. People said that those were used to check for contaminants in the water source underground, if anything leaked through from back in the day. But what I can, con can, can, what I can tell you is that water source leads up mountain near mountaintop to an abandoned reservoir that I'm also going to be filming. That reservoir was used for Crystal Springs Water Company back in the 1800s. The dam is still there. The reservoir is still there. And I was able to confirm with multiple sources that that water is clean, clean enough that you could drink. It's a swimming hole in the summer. People drink from that water. It is a very clean water source. It comes down the mountain at Solomon Creek and goes through that culvert. So that water, there's no danger of anything being contaminated. So when I go in there in the summer to do my snorkeling and underwater metal detecting, Aside from it being cold water, mountain cold water, it's going to be safe. So there's no worry, no danger. But that reservoir is going to be getting dismantled, I was told from a source, this year. So I'm going to film it before it's gone. But it is a 100% clean, reliable, safe water source that goes through the culvert under the rail yard. <clears throat> Camp Crystal Springs. I don't know about that, but it is called Crystal Spring Water Company, which I did show parts of that reservoir and the old sign in my Ashley Plains video. So if you go to my Ashley Plains video, the earlier part of the video, we did see the reservoir and the old concrete sign. I think it said 1881 Crystal Springs Water Company. Yes, it was CNJ. Um, I'm not going to go back and do it, but if you watch the replay, I did show map images and rail line images. Um, of what used to take place there from the 1930s up until pretty much modern day. But yeah, CNJ rail yard, it did exist there. Yeah, Rich, I didn't know either. I've seen those pipes at Centralia and they use them to get heat temperatures, heat readings of the underground mine fire there at this particular location. I had no idea what they were for, but they said it was for underground contaminants that would have leaked through the ground, probably from the operation of the CNJ rail yard or even the breaker area. So it was used to check, check for contaminants that may be leaking into the water source, but <laughs> super fun site. Um, but that's from long ago from what I was told from, like I said, multiple sources, it is a safe area. Now the water in that area is drinkable water. So I have no problem returning in the summer and cold water hasn't bothered me. So I will be returning and to see not only how deep that water pocket is, but to see if there's anything that may be washed down from somewhere with my um, metal detector that's hanging up on my shelf there. Hey, like I want a rail fan. Remember you from uh, Bernie's train show. All right. So um, I'm going to chat with you guys just for a few minutes. I know I didn't pay attention to the chat, so I do apologize, which I already did, but I always try to do my best to acknowledge you guys, but I will see the replay later on and see what you guys are chatting about. Um, but anything um, that I did miss, I'll see later on. Um, if there are any questions, hopefully someone in the chat was able to answer. If not, you can maybe do your own additional research. But um, as mentioned, like I said, going forth, if I don't share any significant details to locations, it's just because there's nothing to share that I could find right off the top of my hat. Um, not top of my hat. I don't worry. <laughs> top of my head um but you know just understand that i i love exploring and love sharing these locations with you and 
you know, if I do find something, you'll be the first to know. <clears throat> now, I will tell you coming up, um, since you're on here, if you are listening still, oh, we're over 100. Thanks for everyone that did tune in. Uh, schedule for the rest of this week. So tomorrow, Wednesday, is going to be something rail related since we did do a video about the CNJ rail yard. Tomorrow's vid vid video was an experiment. And you're going to recognize the location, but you may not come to expect what I show in that video. I'm not going to go any more than that, but tomorrow's video is real related. Friday's video, we will be exploring um, a pretty cool location that was at a couple years ago. But I will tell you, and I do say it in the video, for Friday's video, you're highly encouraged to watch to the end because there is some information to share that you may not want to miss. It's something pretty exciting, something that may be right up your alley that may be beneficial to you. So that's going to be Friday's exploration video. And then I have other things set for next week already. But um, everyone that did tune in, though, thank you so very much for doing so. Anyone that gave a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. It means a lot to me that you guys tune in and listen to my rambling. And hopefully uh, we'll do a live again sometime in the near future. Nothing planned as of right now. This is the only thing I did plan out. But if I do go live again... If I'm able to, I will at least put out the teaser like I did this time, letting you know when I'll be live, at what time. That way, if YouTube fails to notify you, you can at least tune in on your own. Big thanks to RJ and for Matt for modding. And if any other mods were here, thanks as well. Um, and we will see you know, what the future does hold as far as... As of right now, no meetups are planned on my end. Not to say they won't be, but right now nothing is planned. But if anything does happen, it'll probably be in summer, early fall. Um, but we'll see what happens between now and then. But a lot of things planned on my end. I have just a backlog of activity to get to since I was sick for a few months and I'm slowly knocking them off one by one. And I keep getting suggestions too from viewers about, you know, check this out, check that out. Some are local, some are out of state. And all I could do is add them to the list and hopefully get to them one day. But I do need to kind of keep things going in an orderly fashion. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you have a, an enjoyable evening. And if you have nothing else to do, watch another one of my videos. If not, um, I'll see, see you real soon in the next video, which will be tomorrow for some more rail activity. Have a good night, guys.